this book in the 90s, and I mean, from the, the way it tastes to the way it looks to the way it makes you feel. And I can't cook, so maybe there's some hope for me since you didn't cook a lot. I, can, I work with, there's uh, ham and cheese biscuits out front, and then also the white basket there has little Oreo truffles. Grab one, take one as you go, a little nice. snack for the day. So, <laughs> quick moment of housekeeping on our schedule going forward. We have a board of cast on the 22nd, which is next Wednesday. We have an open slot. So, if you know anybody needs to present, give us a call or let them call us or uh, send us an email. On the 5th, we have <coughs> and number 9, Steakhouse. On the 12th, we have Don Mullins Corporation and Harris Terry. So, we've got some really good speakers coming, so go ahead and put them on your schedule. And uh, when you see me in town, say, hey, thanks for agreeing to uh, do One Million Cups. Ask others to do that. We have a really uh, interesting guest today that's going to present. And he actually lives out of town and learned about One Million Cups. And has come in town to visit his mom and said, can I present while I'm in town visiting family? Mm -hmm. And so Sean from Every Event Gifts is here. So give him a round of applause and welcome him to Madisonville. I can't tell you. This is uh, this is my fifth um, one million cups that I've done, wow. and uh, I've done all four of the others were in Missouri, and then I'm scheduled to go to Tulsa and Omaha and Lawrence, Kansas, and then probably going to do some more. Uh, I'm by far the most honored to be here in my hometown. I spent the first 17 years of my life in Madisonville, uh, and so it's. It's quite an honor to be here. I have my mother, Dr. Shirley Spence, family friend, John McLaren, whose son I went to Boy Scouts with, and it's just an incredible thing for me to be here. So I, I thank you all for letting me be here and, and share something that I'm extremely proud of. Um, every event, yes. And I believe that I have five to six minutes, so I'll do that, and then we can do whatever questions you might have. The Every Event Gives story is, is pretty short. Uh, it starts with me. As uh, an entrepreneur, I've spent much of my professional life as an entrepreneur. I started several companies, a couple of which did pretty well, a couple of which did not do pretty well. I've got that standard entrepreneur story of wins and losses, and it's all just a part of the deal. Um, every event gives really is an outgrowth of that entrepreneurship, but also, as you'll see, I've got a little bit of an issue. I have MS. And when you have something like that uh, happen, it really uh, helps you kind of refocus and decide what's going to be important. And I had a fairly major relapse a few years ago, and really what it got me to thinking about it was how does business uh, mix with my commitment to trying to make the world a better place with whatever time I have and whatever resources that I have. And at the time, I owned a, a um, and we're going to need to talk because at the time I owned an event management company and was selling hundreds and hundreds of tickets through different online services. Thousands of tickets. At one point I had 40 something events on one online service like ours and was giving those fees to somebody else every day and watching it just go away and I thought, well, I should really do this. And then that began to mix with this idea that I had after my relapse of how do I use business to really help make the world a better place. And that ended up morphing into this idea of every event gifts. And what we do is really very, very simple. We sell, I uh, will go ahead and switch through Dan. Um, what we do is very, very simple. Um, we work with independent event planners, which you're a perfect example. Um, and nonprofit organizations to provide an easy way to sell their tickets online. It amazes me how many events that any of us in this room might go to that don't sell their tickets online when they could make more money, make it easier, um, even if they just sold 10 or 20 percent more tickets by doing it online. Um, there are many, many events that would, and we have many events that sell hundreds of tickets online, and it just makes their lives so much easier. So that's the first thing. If we make life easier and allow them to sell their tickets. And the second thing is we're promoting this idea of what I was talking about, making the world a better place through business. Conscience-driven capitalism, which is a term that we coined and we've trademarked 
And that's what, and it's the idea, not just of being charitable. I mean, all of us in the room that have businesses think, okay, well, what can I do? Do I want to make a donation to the Boy Scouts, or do I want to contribute to this, or contribute to that? This is a step beyond that, and it's figuring out how can I integrate giving into every business transaction that we make, and that's what we do. Every single sale that we make, we give 50 cents of that ticket price to um, the charity of the event planner's choice. So they get to decide where it's going to go, and as long as it goes to someplace that's a legitimate charity, then that's just fine with us. So that's our solution. Easy free, well, free way to sell tickets, charitable giving, provides an extra incentive to use and share every event gift. So on the one hand, it's my personal passion to use business to give back and find ways to make the world a better place, but nobody's going to really care about that in terms of figuring out how to do their business if we can't also make the world, if, if we can't also help them with their business. And so um, the whole idea of um, conscious driven capitalism is by giving back, you can also improve your business. If we're not improving your business, then you're not going to have any money to give back, right? And so one of the ways that people use us is they are able to say a portion of every ticket goes to XYZ charity, it enhances their ability to market, it enhances their ability for people to then share what they're doing. Um, and so then you've got everybody who cares about the Humane Society, for example, is more, more um, likely to go out and share an event if that event is also contributing to um, the Humane Society. So we do races, 5Ks, we do dinners, we do music festivals, we do all sorts of things. And about 80 to 85% of our events are for-profit events. And we allow them to take that for-profit event and have a component at no cost to them, give back to charity. So it's a pretty powerful marketing tool through them. Um, and that really is the underlying magic of the whole thing. We make it really easy. Um, for event planners to succeed at their core business, which is really selling tickets when it gets down to it, and we provide them an opportunity to make the world a better place, and it's all at no cost to them. <laughs> so, marketing and sales, that's the core of how I spend the vast majority of my day. I spend a little bit of my day dealing with administration, but we're selling and selling and selling and getting people to put their events up on our site. We are in 15 states. We just got started, really, we had $200 worth of sales in June. We've now sold about $30,000 worth. We're in 15 states. We'll probably do another, before now and the end of the year, what we're probably going to do sixty dollars to $80,000 more in sales. We're on track to do that. Um, so it's really a pretty exciting thing for us. Um, where's Anna, if you go back over. Um, but that's what we do. So we do two things. One, really we use direct sales locally, but that's just so that you know, I can keep my local people happy, investors and everything, so that we can have a local presence. One city doesn't, it's just such a small part of the whole country that we're focused, I spend my time focusing on the other 99% of the market, and I have a salesperson who deals with Columbia so that, you know, my investors can be happy, and we've got the local big 5K that, you know, like we're doing the big Humane Society event, and we're doing a, an event with the local beer brewery and that sort of thing, and that's what happens locally. We're going to wrap this up in like a minute and a half. Um, but in 15 states so far, I spend most of my day right now emailing uh, people all around the country, but we figured out ways to systematize this, and every state, every part of what I do is getting transferred over to other people so that I can just manage, or somebody else could step in and manage and they become less and less reliant on me every day because anybody can do what we do. Go ahead. Um, competition, there are over 260 companies in space. Eventbrite is the biggest. Anybody heard of Eventbrite? Several people. Um, they do about a billion two in business. Um, so, you know, they're not going to care about us. So we can get to, we could sell $100 million worth of tickets and they don't care about us, but we will be very happy to sell $100 million worth of tickets. <laughs> so it's going to be a while before it becomes a big deal for them. Um, we have a uniquely qualified management team. I'm the CEO. I own a marketing company. I own an event planning company. I work for a $700 million e-commerce company. So all the individual components of what it takes to do what we do, I've got 
Our CFO is an accountant. Mike Nichols has started several multi-million dollar companies. Neil Swanson is technological everything. Denise takes care of local sales. And if you have questions about the Board of Advisors, they're really incredible. I'd be happy to talk about it with you. Um, everything we do is focused on just getting events and hosts, right? That's my entire life, is getting new events on the site, getting new people to host events, um, and then helping them sell tickets. And then we're also raising money. So we've raised about $80,000 so far. We're going to raise another 50-ish by the end of the year, and then we're going to do a $400,000 round next year. So that takes a little bit of my time, but 90% of my time is event, events and hosts, just getting them up on the site. So this is our last slide. We have a proven concept and revenues. We are in 15 states. We will raise money at the end of each stage, right? So we'll do you know, close to 150 by the end of this year, another 400 next year. Then we're going to be looking at trying to raise several million dollars in the year after that and just keep moving up. And we've got several models of people who've done what we're doing to follow. And in the end, you know, we'll be looking to do a massive rounds because what we're trying to do is really create a several hundred million dollar national big deal company and we feel good about where we are but my goodness we have a really 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 long way to go and we're either going to reach profit well we will reach profitability in may of 2016 is when we believe we'll reach profitability and the goal will either be the seller keep building and become a fortune 500 company that's what we're doing so that's me um, that's every event gives. That's the last slide. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. But thank you so much for having me here today. Yes, sir. We're back to Madisonville, Kentucky. I'm going to have an event at the Ballard Convention Center. Uh, it's going to be a, a meal. Uh, this is hypothetical. Sure. We're going to um, see 400 people. We're going to yep. serve a meal. And I'm going to sell tickets to that event. How can you help me in Madisonville? sell those 400 tickets. Okay, well here's the main thing. What we really do is, um, our the primary value of using every event gifts is we, in about 10 to 20 minutes, you could be selling tickets to that event online, which then allows you to email um, the website to everybody who's on your list, in your organization, or your friends, or whatever. It allows you to post that on Facebook, and Twitter, and all of those things and then we handle all of the processing so you don't have to go get your own merchant account you don't have to do all these things that most people don't know how to do you, you don't have to create a website because we provide you a really cool web page that is an advertisement for your event and so that is the core of what we do and so in that way we make it very easy for you and in that way you know i've got events ranging from california to new york city right now and it takes them they set it up they're good to go we also have other tools that will help you with social media and that sort of thing. Um, but really, in the end, we just provide, it's like we provide you the hoe, and then it's up to, your, uh, up to you to do that manual labor and work, but you couldn't do it without the hoe. One follow-up question. Sure. So then what's it going to cost me? Oh, that's such a good question. It's not going to cost you a dime. All of the fees come out of the ticket purchase, right? And you can handle that in one of two ways. You can charge the fee, which amounts to uh, it's 99 cents plus 2.5 percent plus the 3 percent for for the credit card company, right? So that fee can either go on top of your ticket price, or you can fold it into your ticket price. And really, it's about 50/50. People do it both ways. So you don't pay me a dime. Um, until a ticket is bought and then that comes out of the ticket purchase. So you never write me a check, I write you a check at the end of your event. So if you only sell 20 tickets out of that, that's the that's all, only fee you're going to get. Um, if you sell 20 tickets and they're $100 a ticket, or they're 25, okay, say it's 20, $25 a ticket, then you're It'll be around two dollars. It'll be a little. It'll be two dollars and some change that you'll get per ticket. I'll send you a check um, for twenty-five dollars times a hundred, so twenty-five hundred dollars minus you know less than ten percent. So I'll send you a check for that, and then out of my fees, I will send a check for fifty cents um, for every ticket sold to whatever charity you told me to send it to. So it's a small amount, but that to the charity. But like so far, we've sent um, 
almost $1,000 to charity. Uh, and that's really the point of what we, uh, of conscious driven capitalism. It's all very small amounts, but it all really adds up. And can you imagine if every company gave even 10 cents out of every transaction that they made, if everybody did that, imagine the millions and millions of dollars. If Amazon.com gave um, 50 cents for every transaction that was done, then on one day they would give an average of, it's like $16 million a day to charity. If they just did that tiny little 50 cents per transaction. Yes, sir. He used the example of 400 tickets. Now, obviously, I, I wouldn't think Amazon would be interested in the event that only had 400 tickets. What's the range of size of an, an organization's event that, let's say, they can sell 50 tickets or like the Super Bowl? You know, it's you're not talking about the same organization that could handle both of those, right? Well, you know, right now. Um, we have, we have a pretty wide range. Okay. So um, we are not in competition with Ticketmaster, for example, which anybody who's ever bought tickets, you've probably bought a ticket that related to Ticketmaster. Um, I am in a different part of the industry. So we deal with independent folks who are doing their own events. And so that might be, we, we've had events that have sold single digits. We've had events that have sold several hundred tickets. We are currently talking to a film festival in New Jersey that will sell 30,000 tickets, right? But they're not attached to a venue, so tick, that's what Ticketmaster does. Ticketmaster does venues, so we're not competing with Ticketmaster on that. So the range is really pretty huge. We could easily do, tech, from a technological perspective, we could do a 100,000 person event. One of my board of advisors is in charge of a festival, he created a festival that has about 30,000 people a year, we're going to be doing ticketing for that next year. So we're, I know that at the very least we will do at least one 30,000 person event next year, and I will probably next year do a couple of hundred where 20 tickets are sold. Right? But that's where our niche is, is in these things that are not attached to, you know, Rub Arena or where, wherever. <coughs> yes, sir. Since this is going to be uploaded to YouTube, and since a previous presenter of ours, Jonathan Burton, the CEO of Social Coaster, I typically, I think, tunes in and watches these from uh, Nashville. Great. Um, um, we need to get you guys talking because um, his app uh, is very event focused as well as interest focused and uh, just an observation that, uh, that that may be a good contact for each of you. Guys. Great, I appreciate that. And that, by the way, is a, a great way to point out the power of One Million Cups, both for Madisonville and beyond. It's just like I met Tim, who I never in a million years would not have met if he hadn't happened to come here today. And if I hadn't come here today, and he provides a service that I literally in the market for today. And I'm talking. I was literally talking to one of his competitors today, and I could use anybody <laughs> anywhere in the country. So it's a perfect example of, of what one million customers are doing. Yeah, great job. Yes, ma'am. I got a couple of questions actually. No way. Oh yeah. I have a feeling I should not be talking about that. <laughs> no, the questions I've got are: okay, you're an online business, and you're basically a credit transaction program. Yes, These credit card great. transactions, yep. you charge an additional fee over and above what the normal credit card company takes to, 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 to transact, yes. plus a 99 cent fee, which out of that 99 cent, you're going to give 50 cents to a nonprofit organization. Yes, ma'am. So $10 is $1.54 for the fees that you'll have out of that $10 ticket. That sounds right. Um, so it is online, it is website driven. Why are you raising the kind of capital you're raising? What are you going to do with those dollars? That's part one. And sure. employees do you have is part two. And um, what are your what are your ways of, of growing your event marketing program? Sure, That's I'm happy. I don't I had a couple. Yeah, remind, <laughs> That's right. remind me if I miss some of that. Uh, um, <laughs> those, are, those are great questions. And being in the and I'm not pitching you for money, I'm, I'm really not, but to talk about that process. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. A lot of us are looking at uh, gaining capital at some point in time right. for people that listen to these programs. So the, what, the questions of why, how, and that's where right. are important to them. Yeah, and I'm, I'm in the middle of all that. And so I have investors who ask me all those questions literally almost every day. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have to have at least decent answers to that. Um, roughly 60% 
of the money that we're raising um, is being spent on marketing, right? Our goal is to grow fast. I would like to have, um, we, if everything went perfectly, which we know it won't, we will sell uh, roughly $80 million worth of tickets by the end of year three. Now that is nuts to most people in this room, and it sounds a little bit nuts to me. I promise you it sounds nuts to my mother, but that is not an inappropriate amount for this industry. There are several examples of companies that have done that. And in the end, when $80 million worth of tickets are sold, you just point out the math. We get a tiny, tiny piece of that, right? So we have to scale. Um, we start to um, make real money at about a million tickets, right? So how everything we do is how quickly can we get to a million tickets sold? So 60% of our money is spent on marketing, which is spent on two primary ways. Um, one, online advertising, which we are ramping up, which primarily means Google advertising, but it also means Facebook. So we spend about, at some point somebody will tell me that I'm giving away proprietary information. I shouldn't say all this, but it, I don't think that matters. 75% or so is spent on Google and about 25% is spent on Facebook. Um, we spend proportionately a lot of money, and this is getting ramped up every 60 days. We've got more people working on this where we are um, building lists, doing research um, to build lists of people who need our services. So you're going to be on the left. So event planners, people who are doing things that are selling tickets, um, which is, you know, in Madisonville, there are probably five or ten, maybe 20 examples in, of people who are doing this. And it's like nonprofit organizations, it's individual event planners, um, it's not really venues, um, but it is people who are throwing their own events. In Columbia, Missouri, for example, it's like 200 people you know, that we really care about, but then you multiply that times the whole country. So I have people who better be right now building lists, and I have to pay them an hourly rate to build that list. Now sometimes we can buy those lists, and that's where a little bit of the money goes, but we're mostly building our own proprietary, internal, very cool, tailored to exactly what we need lists. Um, that's where most of that 60 is going to go. The other 40% um, is on a variety of things that mostly relate to operations. Um, but in the end, for example, salaries are um, between 10 and 20%. And um, most of it's on other kinds of operations. But 60% is customer acquisition. Did I get, did I miss? Place. Hey, what do you have? You know, we are not going to be super employee int intensive. I, um, which again, mother, very happy about this. I will start getting a salary on November 1st. I, as somebody over here was saying, yeah, I'm very, mom's happy. mom's happy, wife is happy, everybody's happy. Um, I've not, I've been working, um, and for a while I was working somewhere and then I stopped to do this full time, um, but I've been doing this um, since January with no salary, I haven't taken a dime from the company. November 1st, I start taking a salary. I'm the only um, full-time person. We had a CTO who was part-time, he's gonna go full-time in about six months, and then I have several contract employees. This is a great thing for any of you who are doing any number of things. I use a program, a, an online service called Odesk. It's just odesk.com, um, and you can find people and it is both international and local. There are hundreds and hundreds of contractors locally that you can hire to do things and then manage their work if it's work that can be done online and you can manage them online. And so, for example, I have a woman in Wyoming who is doing several hours a week worth of work for me. And that's how we're doing most of what we're doing right now and really much of our scale will be contract labor through Odesk. Okay. Yes, I would like for you to say something about the board of directors because most of us uh, that are smaller businesses, uh, we really need advisors, but uh, I 
doubt seriously any of us have a board of directors that is actually active. Well, I know Mark, but yeah, I consider you a bigger business. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> that board of directors and how how they are going to work into your success. Sure, um, I'm really very proud of my board of advisors because they're kind of locally and to an extent nationally, they're kind of heavyweights. And first, I'll tell you, um, I'm a big believer in the domino theory of pretty much everything, which is if you have to knock over a bunch of really big blocks, you got to knock over this, the first one, and <laughs> that just means knocking over the smallest one that makes it easier to knock over the next biggest to knock over the next biggest, then that's a great way to do it. You don't try to knock over all the blocks at once. So when I built my, started building my advisory committee, I started with the most important, helpful person who was most likely to say yes, right? Because once you've got the first yes, it's easier to get the second, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth. And so that's how I built this pretty heavy duty committee. Like for example, my guy on my advisory committee who does the festival with 30,000 people. Um, we've got the director, the executive director of our United Way because he knows about charities. I just, I remember a friend of mine Look back into your memory banks and think about who you know. And I forgot, gosh, I've got a friend of mine that I used to know and I hadn't talked to in eight years who helped do ticketing for the last four Olympics, mm -hmm. right? And I just remember that like four weeks ago and contacted him and he's now on my advisory board. So I've got this world class, amazing guy, um, probably wouldn't have done it six months ago, but now he can see that we've got our act together, and he, was, he came in. So really, the, the, once you've got them recruited, um, which starts small and get big, um, then it's just a matter of keeping them engaged. And I actually do spend a decent amount of time kind of thinking about that. I ask them questions that I think are going to be interesting, I, um, and that are important to me. I mean, I don't ask them stuff just to ask them. But I need to keep them engaged. So I send emails to everybody. I send an email to um, one individual and then share that answer with everybody. I do everything I can to compliment them so that they see, you know, I mean, we all, no matter how important you are, you've got your big ego, right? So we stroke the, the ego and help them understand that their support and their involvement, because I'm not paying them anything, right? I take them to dinner once every couple of months, but that's it. And these are all people who can command huge salaries. Um, but they're doing it because, you know, they get to help a new thing, and it's kind of fun, and it's all a very positive experience for them. So give them a lot of opportunities to be involved, create a positive experience. But they are an advisory board. They're not someone that would have any kind of legal... Nope. Um, no, and that's important. That, that is actually pretty important. Now, we are going to have... We're getting ready to put some incentives in where for le different levels of participation, they can earn equity in the company, and so that will entail some legal ties. But no, they don't actually have any power. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, are any, no. are any liabilities? There? No, they have no liabilities. They have no. They can't tell me what to do, and they have no liabilities. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, you got my wheel spinning when you said uh, 5K that you were getting ready to, to sell tickets for that, or I guess sell like. For the runners would be right. Yeah, we, we, we've done several 5K okay. races. I have. I am very. Uh, I guess I don't know. Connected what the word is with a company in Evansville that the uh, Chrono Track that does the big oh, yeah. thing and they do small races. They do big yeah. ones. You're talking about giving back to charity, and I'm thinking a lot of the. Oh, this. By the way, this is going to be a very kind of question. There's two parts to it at least. Um, a lot of the uh, 5Ks are done by. <laughs> Nonprofits trying to raise money for yes. their and awareness for their events. So I see where that fits in perfectly. Now, do you guys have, or would you be sort of a kind of an ancillary or extra thing for, like, say, Chrono Track does? You know, the timing. They they right. have the the tags and the bibs and the whole thing put together. But do you have that? Is that something you're going to branch off to, or would you be working in conjunction with someone like them? And the second part of my question before you get is. How can we help you? Okay. I love that question. Um, really, what we do is we make it easy to process the money and the names. So we make it easy for you to create lists. We provide um, a special interface um, 
for you to do on-site registration with your iPad or your iPhone, and we and you know create name tags and do all those sorts of things. And so as and we're improving our technology every week, so we're increasing those things. At some point, we'll probably add some special things for races and that sort of thing. But honestly, most of the local races don't need to be that advanced. So we've got what most races need, and then there's going to be that five or ten percent that need lots of fancy things. And the day will come when we can do that, but right now we deal with the, what the most need. How you can help me is like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, tell people about us, because um, we're in 15 states and my home state of Kentucky is not one of them. So we would love to help with ticketing for events in Madisonville or Lexington or whatever. And it really is a service that is very, very good, very tested. I'm really, really proud of it. Yes, sir. The races. Um, you sell tickets for five k mm -hmm. runs in several areas, and yes. then we'll have one here in Madisonville, and it's a special race. Could you invite those all those runners that you had registered through your service to this race in Madisonville that that we have no contact? You know, yeah, that's a good point. At some point, no, really the short answer is no. At some point we may do that sort of thing. At this point we're really focused on um, protecting people's privacy. And so we don't do anything. Once somebody buys it, I got their information. If you bought a ticket for us, I've got your email, I've got your phone number. <laughs> but we do not use that for anything. We don't sell it, we don't do anything. At some point we may provide services that people opt in for where we would do that. But that's a little bit down the road. Right. You know, like if I run a race in Evansville and then I, and you sold me a ticket, then there's one in Madisonville. You possibly could send me information. I say, hey, well, I'll go down to Madisonville and run. Right, and that and that day may come. We don't have. We're not collecting that information right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Be available for questions for a few minutes afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, don't forget your chocolate Oreo truffles, otherwise, oh, if you see, we'll have to take them home with you <laughs> later in the day, and then we'll need a nap. Okay, next week, um, Fortner Gas, we have one spot open. If you know anybody that uh, needs to apply, please have them contact our office, and we can help them get their form filled out, or we can. Ruth Ann, somehow we didn't get the 29th of October listed up there. We kind of skipped over that. Um, Mary? Do, we don't have the 29th of October up there. Do we? Are we oh, off? On, are we off on our I, dates? Well, no, she's not the 29th. I just ignored her. It's not in her world. <laughs>